Go for it. Oh, yeah. Only one pre-roll today. It's Maeve. If you're like me, you want the best for your dog. Maybe you feed them kibble recommended by a vet or a fresh food diet, but did you know that these are often low in protein, high in carbs, and are the leading cause of weight, mobility, dental, and skin conditions? That's where Maeve comes in. Make the switch to raw today. Right now, Maeve is offering $40 off your first order at meetmave.com slash JRVP. Go to meetmave.com slash JRVP. That's spelled M-A-E-V to receive $40 off your first order. That's meetmave.com slash JRVP. Only one pre-roll means I'm relatively clear-headed to talk Hot Pockets, favorite Jesselnik offensive guests in a joint recommendation station all coming up in episode 206 of the Jesselnik and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. Three seconds is not enough time. <laughs> I like it when Justin Lake breaks out the acting early. Uh, what is yeah. it from? Uh, uh, Aaron, do you know what that's from? No, I don't. That is from the new season of I Think You Should Leave. Uh, last night, I, I, and I knew this was coming. I knew this, I Think You Should Leave was coming. I've watched, uh, I watched the season two like at midnight immediately and then like watched it the next day again. I like, watched it all. And I'd forgotten it was coming out last night at midnight. Same. Went, I had no idea. Went to go see a movie. I'm not going to say what movie it is. And I was planning on talking about the movie when I came in here today. And then I left the movie. I was like, I can't. Liz and I were just like, fuck this, and got up and left, and went. Well, you're home. not saying the movie because out of respect, because the movie's bad, and you don't want to. I don't like it. talking about bad. I don't want to talk about things I don't like on the show. I, if I love the movie, I'll talk about it. But I'm not. It's like I haven't walked out of a movie in a long, long time. Okay. I think the the Lego the Lego movie I think was the last one I walked out on, and I fucking hate it. That was five minutes. This I made it halfway through and was like, let's get the fuck out of here. Um, came home and was just like bummed i was like that was i was, had a night planned and then uh at midnight was like oh yeah i think you should leave and watch i haven't watched the sixth episode yet but i watched uh i watched the first five and huge huge laughs I, listen season two was perfection season one is amazing season two was incredible this is still great this is like still great. Um, I don't think it, it, it's not as great as season two, but that is like an impossible bar. But there are some huge, huge laughs. And three seconds, not enough time is a, uh, the, the Tim Meadows sketch is fucking hilarious. There was this, I don't want to spoil anything. Liz's favorite, there's like a, a Bachelor parody that is, um, it's like uh, Tim Robinson's one of the guys on The bachelor, on the, the Bachelorette, I guess, because it's like a girl, and she's got to eliminate people. And they're at like this big pool house where everyone's like, you know, being flirting, and it's all these like beautiful people. And she gets rid of Tim Robinson because she's like, I feel like you're only here for the zip line. <laughs> And there's like a zip line down into the pool that he just he just goes on over and over again. And when they try to make him come and like mingle with everybody and play the game, he just eats as fast as he can. <laughs> and it was like truly hilarious. But the um, the Tim Meadows and Tim Meadows is one of the funniest people of all time. Uh, uh, totally underrated on SNL and just incredible. And him screaming, three seconds is not enough time, is, uh, the, uh, the whole sketch is hilarious. But you watch I Think You Should Leave immediately. I had heard Netflix says that they, it's not like a good, sh- like it's not a successful show. I feel like everyone I know talks about it all the time. Yeah. I see it referenced constantly online and they like, they're like, no. What do you mean they say sh- that? Like Netflix says like it's not a hit. And I, I don't believe it. I mean, what the fuck is a hit on that piece of shit streaming app? Damn. Answer me, Aaron. I mean, I think you should leave as a hit. That's for sure. That's right. Have you, you haven't seen it yet? You haven't watched any? I haven't watched the new season now. I'm okay. going to go home right after this. Uh, we're taping two episodes today. We've got some time off after this. And, uh, and I'm going to go home and, uh, and watch. I think you should leave uh, again. Liz is working. I'm going to watch episode six by myself with my dog as it was meant to be. I love it. I can't wait to watch it all again and get new jokes. Everyone's amazing. Dang. I love it. And then I might go back and watch season two again because it I, is perfection. I haven't watched season two s- since the first time I watched it. 
I, but you're uh, making me happy. Gives me something to look forward to. I've been like banging through uh, Terrace House on Netflix, so this is going to hop that in, in order. I know you don't know what Terrace House I is. I have no idea what that but is. But the real ones out there will know. But it's like eight year old reality show. You know. My Liz was watching. Uh, Liz, for somehow, while I was gone, I was in Indianapolis last weekend, and Liz got into fucking Vanderpump Rules out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. She's never talked about it, never mentioned people it. People love that show. And I came home and she was like, like halfway through the season and then skipped to the, uh, skipped to the reunion. I guess the part, part two of the reunion is tomorrow night, but I was like, I, I couldn't possibly give a fuck about this. I don't know why it's such a big deal. Well, I don't like, know. Succession is a little like that too, that I think initially at least it wasn't getting huge ratings, even though it's the most talked about sort of thing that's going to be written about on Vulture in The Ringer. It's talked about by certain people. I mean, the ratings compared to other... It's I not Think like, You Should Leave is a little like that. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I think if I Think You Should Leave had the HBO machine behind it, maybe it'd be a little different. It wasn't like a bingeable thing. Um, what did you think of the succession finale? I loved it. Aaron, did you watch it? Nope. I tapped out uh, early in season two. I loved the finale, but... I couldn't help watching it thinking how much more I would love it if I didn't know it was the finale. Hmm. You know, if they had just had the season come out, been like season four, and then after this episode was like, that's the end. And I know why they didn't do that. They got way better ratings because they just said this is the final season. But like the way that when Logan Roy dies, everyone's shocked because you, Spoiler. Had, you had no idea. It's Listen, that was halfway through the season. If, you, if you're this far behind, I'm not spoiling anything for you. Um, that it was just out of nowhere, you didn't see it coming. That that would have been great. With the finale, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm watching this and like, you know how, if if you're watching a heist movie and they explain what the plan's going to be and you see they like do almost do like a flash forward to how the plan works out. If they do that, you know it's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know because they, because they're not going to do it twice the same way. That when you see that halfway through, you see them all happy and together. You're like, oh, this is going to go so so bad. Well, there, there's you knew it was going to end. I think that was good. I like that there's like a beginning, middle, and an end. That they had a definite idea of how this was going to go. That they were trying to keep the integrity of the show in its quality. I think they stuck the landing. And as someone who had to binge to catch up like in the middle or late in season three the like way that it all like has gone in a circle three times and repeated itself a little bit act, you know sneaks up on you a little bit when you watch it all in a row so i thought it was awesome i didn't care that i knew it was going to end and i didn't know how it was going to end did you? you you just no i thought i knew it was going to have to be because they were so happy in the middle i knew it has to go bad if they had been all miserable well, and was, fighting there, it would have been weird like, if, they could like come everyone together. is super happy sure at super happy but i knew like it's like let's just see how it's going to go wrong i i loved it i loved the way they ended everything i loved where every character ended up i could have used a a little more Jerry and Roman. Yeah. I would have loved like a t after the credits, like a 10 minute, like them just like making out in the closet. I would have been thrilled with but that. But did you watch the, like the, the director and executive producer of the show when they do the little like four minutes of them talking I afterwards? Did not. That's always interesting. It's weird. Cause they kind of tell you like how they're thinking of it. And it's interesting to get that perspective, but I don't know if I really want that. Like the way that he talked about, um, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, the, Kendall? The main character, Kendall. Yeah, how like that, those couple years that the show paints, essentially, like he's going to be thinking about that for the rest of his life. Like mm -hmm. th those were kind of the biggest years of his life. And he'll start some bullshit company or try to do something, but he'll never get back to that point. Like hearing them talk about it was interesting, but I'd almost rather not hear like the artists talk about like I, their way of I agree. doing it. I don't mind. I'd seen a couple of those like after things, but if I watch it on HBO Max, you it would come up. If you watch it just like I have like the I have yeah. the DVR and now that HBO Max, like it was like HBO Max is going to become Max. I'm like, "Okay. You must have your reason. Seems dumb. HBO is the name. Okay? Max is nothing. I don't know why you're afraid. I think they're like people think HBO was like elite like liberal elite, and so they no, want to I get rid of that. I think it's because they have other networks on it, like food bullshit. Yeah, but HBO is still the biggest name. That they were yeah. like, okay, we're gonna be Max. So I was like, all right, do your thing. What I don't give a shit. That's nice. But then I found out you have to download another app and re put in all your information, and I'm just not going to do that. 
I'm never going to do it. And I'm paying for it. I mean, I have HBO. So I got HBO Max for free. But I'm like, there's, no one's doing this. Nobody wants Max. I mean, all you have to do is hit the, you know, lost my password button one time. It's pretty easy. I did it. I did it. I had to do it because all, have- I, all I have is Max. I don't have cable anymore or anything. So that's it. What am I going to do? It changed automatically for me. Yeah, it changed it automatically, did. but you had to re-log in, I, I hear. That's tough. Anthony's, you know, a simple man. I just think it's dumb. <laughs> I think it's dumb to get rid of the name HBO. It, it, did, auto, it did download automatically for me. Though. But the, the fun part's in the middle of the episode, to go back to that. You're, you're saying, like, they're all happy. Like, that, to me, made that episode. That, that was super memorable. Them doing, like, Roman, who, to me, was... They put a lot on his plate in this last season. He mm-hmm. couldn't carry it all. Um, but Kieran Culkin's just, like, amazing. Him doing an impression of Kendall, how Kendall would murder them, like, and Shiv going back and forth with that, to me was, like, that was, that was like, amazing. Kendall, like, laughing as they're, they're in the kitchen and doing all that. Like, that felt very brother, sister, everything. Like, I, I loved that. Yeah, but if they'd ended it right there, it would have been, like, the worst final episode. People would have been like, well, what of is course, yeah. but I'm saying, but that, that was, that was, like, that was the meat of that episode. It was just as meaty. Loved the episode. Liz loved it. Liz, Liz got in, Liz started watching it season three with me and was like, oh, I, she can't wait to go back and watch one and two. I'll go with her and do it. But then the season finale, the series finale of Barry was right after that. And I was like, oh, this is like, it's such a hard, like, I wouldn't want to have to do my series finale after fucking succession. But that was great too. It was a, it was interesting. It was like not what you expected and a uh, good closure. I, uh, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed Barry. I enjoyed succession. Loved. I think you should leave. Mm. Hated. Hated the movie that I paid good money to see. I'll find out afterwards. Left. Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to tell people well, th- off thanks. the air, thanks. but on the air, I uh, I don't want to do it. But yeah, I, I had like a, I feel like you guys had a little too high expectations for Super Mario Brothers showing at 10 p.m. on a Sunday, but you know, I would never see Super Mario. I Brothers. saw that this weekend. You did? Yeah. I can't. Well, imagine. you think I wanted to, but uh, yeah, my Ellis. Uh, Ellis and her friend have been talking about it for weeks. I had been promising. And it's Does just, Ellis it's play Super Mario Brothers? They do now. We've got them, or we broke out the old Wii, um, so they play some Mario and Mario Kart. Okay, yeah. cool. Break out the Wii. Um, how was the movie? I mean, it wasn't any worse than I thought it was going to be. It was, it Did was you fine. get mad watching it? No. I've seen worse cartoon, I've, cartoon movies. I've seen worse movie, a- animated movies where like they're trying to be smart and at least it's just you know it's just a super mario brothers movie it's not trying to do anything like too too special so that's fine i feel like i would just start screaming we want shrek (laughs) (laughs) like bring back shrek i I want i want dirty jokes (laughs) in nursery rhymes in in the fairy tales and i want them right now bring give me another shrek i love that guy they definitely, did, they definitely did say, uh, that's a me, uh, a lot. Like, at least four or five times. You gotta. Uh, like, Frozen 2 is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life because it tried to be some deep, like, parable of, like, the Native American experience or something like that. And it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. I didn't know there was a Frozen 2. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was so it was so unbelievably bad. But Super Mario Brothers, you know, they... You know, they just uh, are setting up scenes where they can look like they're playing Mario Kart. There wasn't much point to it. Is it true that Mario, <laughs> instead of Mario and Luigi, instead of being brothers in this one, they're boyfriends? <laughs> it is not. But Luigi kind of gets his day in the in the spotlight. You really don't hear a lot about Luigi uh, in general. And uh, he's a big part of this movie. Listen, you're brushing over what I'm trying to say here. I heard it's woke. <laughs> I heard it's woke. Is it woke? In what way? Are you being serious that some people have said that? Or if not? it's... W- Listen, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm a man. And that means I walk around looking for things that are woke. And when I find out they're woke, I lose my goddamn mind. Mm. Aaron, are, you're like me, right? Oh, yeah. I saw Aaron this weekend. We were in Target uh, protesting. <laughs> we were flipping <laughs> out in Target. Protesting what? They have shirts for kids that say things that are woke. Aaron... How mad were you? So mad. Like Aaron, I didn't even see Aaron. We both had our heads down running through the aisles of Target, clearing off the shelves and ran into each other. And we looked at each other like, are you woke? And then realized, oh, it's you. And then we just laughed. We just laughed. 
Well, the print the princess is like very competent and kind of like the their leader. There you go. That's kind of woke. That's woke. Yeah. She's got to be dumb. <laughs> She's got to be dumb and pregnant, or it's woke. Um, Toad. I saw some theories. Toad's kind of rep- Toad is is like secretly Asian. Does Toad kill anybody in the in the movie? No. So it's that's woke. Diversity. Yeah. It's woke. Yeah. It's woke nonsense, <laughs> and I won't stand for it. Aaron, what kind of beer are you drinking right now? Not Bud Light. That's right. Yeah. You know what's in this? Not Bud Light. <laughs> Check us out on YouTube. You can see Anthony's I got a new water bottle. Gigantic water bottle. I got a new too one. Too big. You can't stick that in the in the cup holder. <laughs> No fucking shit. It's way too. It's way too big for that. Well, it's I know, like, but it's not like I tried. No, I had an old water bottle that was plastic that was kind of like flimsy, and one broke, so I got another one, and I was like, I don't like this. And then I got this metal motherfucker, Yeti. It is. It's a beast. It's heavy. You fill this with water, you can fucking kill somebody. And you know what? If there, if you can get less woke than killing someone with a water bottle, then goddamn it, I'm gonna protest it. Because this is what I'm all about now. You, you know what? If we're not, if we're too anti woke for you, turn it off. Turn it off. I don't give a fuck. Damn. We've got one ad this week, and they're not woke at all. Mave. <laughs> That's bold. I mean, aren't you like uh, afraid of uh, upsetting the woke mob? That's all my thing is to upset the woke mob. <laughs> they they deserve to be poked. At all times. I did notice you're wearing uh, your leather jacket again. A leather jacket again. Leather jacket I am. boy. I am. That's kind of anti-woke. It's totally Fuck anti-woke. Fuck those animals. It's totally anti-woke. Try to take this one. Do you know how people go around burning jackets? Try to burn mine. <laughs> you can't. God bless America. What other movies are, are, are woke or anti-woke? Let's just go through movies and tell, say if it's woke or anti-woke. Name, name a movie. Uh, Fast and the Furious 10. Just woke. Got. Woke. You got the races mixing. I, I, it, it makes me mad. You've been doing that a long time, too. I know. I've, I've been mad the whole time. Oh, Little Mermaid's Little Mermaid, uh, live yeah. action. Little Mermaid woke. Very woke. Uh, unless every character is white, whether they're <laughs> fictional or not. Get that woke nonsense off my screen. I don't want my, my theoretical kids to one day see that and th- feel bad about themselves. Because my kids are going to want to be mermaids, I guarantee it. They're not going to want to live on the land with me. They're going to want to be under the water, regardless of consequences. And my white kids aren't going to want to do that. Because they're going to be like, oh, it's black. What's, what's, the, what's the best hope for my kids in the Little Mermaid world? Melissa McCarthy? Fuck out of here with that woke shit. Give me another movie. All right. How about You Hurt My Feelings uh, starring Julia Louis-Dreyfus? Anti-woke. Oh. Okay. Julia Louis-Dreyfus is a, uh, is a skinhead <laughs> who's let her hair grow back so she can donate it to kids with cancer. And it's her journey. I like that director, Nicole Hoff. She's great. Maybe I'll see that. She's a white supremacist, too. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is out. Woke. One of them's green. Uh, another one's red. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even but know the what, the, is, what is the machine. Oh, Burke, wait, is that the Burt Kreischer movie? That's the Burt Kreischer yeah. movie. Anti-woke. Anti-woke. Everybody's white. Everybody's fat. They're in Russia. That's white as can be. So you like that? I can't wait to see it. Uh, Evil Dead Rise? Anti-woke. You're just killing women the whole time. <laughs> if there's anything more American than that, then I don't want to know. It's uh, too many stars. Too many stripes. How about Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Anti-woke. It's, I believe, if I'm understanding the story of that movie correctly, a girl gets her period Mm -hmm. and is severely punished for like 90 minutes. (laughs) Is that true? That's that's generally the the idea. I'd give, I'll give them my money right now. Let's, let's wrap it up. Let's do Recommendation Station and get the fuck out of here. Go see Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Uh, I call it A Y, uh, A Y T G I. M-M. You know for short. It's spelled M A E V dot com slash J R V P. Anti woke. <laughs> this is, I mean, listen, good thing there's a writer's strike. I would shut this whole system down for what they're trying to pump into our kids' veins. The writer's strike is kind of woke. Yeah. Yeah. But if the writers can't get to work, who's going to write, you know, my white supremacist stories that I want to watch? Mm. 
anything else happen this week for you? <laughs> Just Indian, Indianapolis uh, final weekend. I was uh, I was a little uh, I, I've been burned out on clubs, but this weekend I was like, okay, it's the last one. Last one, I always like pick it up. It's Again, downtown I've t- Indianapolis, right? Yes. I've seen that club. Uh, when I go to the combine every year, there's a couple of different clubs down there. There's a Crackers, there's and there's this Helium, uh, but it was fun. It was funny. Like I got there, and it's hot. Like the club is like steaming, and I'm like, "Hey, what? Can you turn the AC down?" And a lot of times this happens. I get in there and they're like, "Hey, it's too warm in here." And I go, oh, "We'll fix it." And the guys, like the manager's, like, "Oh, it says 68." And I'm like, "Yeah, but it's not 68." <laughs> <laughs> I know what 68 feels like. And he's like, eh, I, I hit the button. I'll, I'll turn it down a little more. Like, it's that manager, like, what am I going to do? You know, the show's in half an hour. Like, uh, I'll make you happy, but there's nothing I can really do. And the final night, he was like, you know, I think there is something wrong with the AC. I'm like, mm-hmm, that's great. Maybe in 10 years when I come back here, you'll have it fucking oh, fixed. Oh, shit. Otherwise, great time. Oh, shit, Helium manager. You just got done fucked up. Happy to be done with clubs. I got one more to make up in July, but uh, now I turn my attention to... The theater stage. Congrats. Thank That's you. big. You have a couple weeks off the road, right? Yes. I've got, I've got to go. Next week, I'm going to, uh, to meet Liz's family in, uh, in Connecticut. But uh, I've met a couple of them before. Um, and then, uh, and then I, have, uh, I have some shows in Mississippi that I'm excited it's about. Big, it's a big, big move, big moment. Yeah. You haven't met that many uh, in-laws before. They're not in-laws to you yet, no. necessarily. But more or less. You haven't met many parents over the years. It's been a while. It's been a while. Put it that way. It's true. It's true. I wish you luck. That'll be fine. I'm. Uh, I love that I can take some of my time off to go do that. <laughs> At least you do it with, you know, grace and humility. Mm-hmm. You might as well just pretend. You might as well just embrace it because she's gonna hear this now. And if you're gonna go do it, you might as well get full credit for it. That's you- the problem I've run into. I've, I find in my marriage, I end up like bitching or making it miserable for Emika for me to do something I don't want to do. But then I do it anyways. So you both don't get the credit and you still do it, which is oh, the trust worst me, of I get worlds. the credit. When I've got to do something like this, when I've got to do like, hey, this is for you, I'm going to like hang out with your friend and like go to dinner. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I open the door and I keep my mouth shut. I just do it. Whereas with this, I was like, I've got to fly Monday morning. Uh, I get a, I'm like my flight is like a 5 a.m. flight and I was like if you ever like doubted that I loved you I'm taking a 5 a.m. flight across country that's, to that's to uh, go to New York and she was she's very happy she's 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 cool so I can talk all the shit I want on the podcast okay well what about if, the friend dinner I mean why can't you just uh entertain the possibility you might enjoy that like do you think li- like I, is Liz miserable when you take took her out to dinner with me you know I'm, she's I'm like a, oh yeah I mean, she fucking hates it. She's like, oh, great. Oh, great. Another Greg dinner. She, I mean, she truly hates it. Um, but uh, no, she, I mean, listen, she's cool. I don't want to do anything. It's not like I'm like, listen, I'm a people person. I just don't want to hang out with your mom. It's like, I don't want to do anything, but I'm going to, I'm going to do this for you. And then it's me time again. And if I swear to Christ, if, if I'm on the plane, if I'm on the plane and they're like tonight's movie. This is, we're going to play a movie for you guys, and it's a woke one. <laughs> oh, 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 fucking forget about it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull out my cell phone. And I'm going to say, well, if you're breaking rules, my anti-woke rules, I'm breaking rules and I'm going to call someone. And you know who I'm calling, Aaron? Who? Adam Carolla. <laughs> I'm going to put him on speakerphone and everyone's going to hear about it. Mm-hmm. I, I was once a, a regular listener of the Adam Carolla podcast. You were a guest. Yeah. Way back. I remember. I remember being like, God damn, how long is this going to be? <laughs> he just keep, I Listen, I, I know Adam Carolla. I, I like him. I would say this to his face. Being on his podcast was awful. It was just it was just him like monologuing about something. And I'm like, I should get in here. I should say something. <laughs> and I have to wait for him to finish his rant. And then I would say something. And then he would interrupt me because it would make him, my comment would make him think about something else and he would monologue again. And I was like, why am I here? And Adam Carolla had, like, the ratings were great, but all his fans only care about Adam Carolla. They're like, oh, I found some new cool comedian on his show. They were just like, give me more Adam Carolla stuff. So, yeah. I want to be on that next week. <laughs> but yeah, good week. Happy to be doing with clubs. Happy to be doing two podcasts in a row here. Listen, watch the YouTube because you get to see the cool thing where our clothes don't change in between episodes. You know, in two weeks, 
You can watch this one and be like, oh, okay. And then next one, you're going to be like, oh, fuck. What happened? Are they homeless now? Mm. No. Hom you know, being homeless is woke. <laughs> How is that? Because it, it's just the way it is. <laughs> Things are woke. <laughs> way to improv. This I water bottle, <laughs> this wa when, I, when, it, when it's empty, I throw it away. And I buy a new one. Because <laughs> if you fill it up again, it's woke. Uh, yeah, I'm regretting, you know, because we're doing back-to-back -back episodes, and I'm just, like, shiny as hell in this lighting, you know. I'm going to start maybe applying some powder, you know, at, at the NFL studios before I come here. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's just, just not looking good. I say let it shine. I, we had, I mean, we were in Comedy Central in the Viacom offices. They had powder for us because I was so goddamn shiny. The lights were heavy. And I was like, instead of putting on this powder, how about we fire the camera guy? And then don't do cameras anymore. Because put it, if someone puts powder on me. R.I.P. Cameraman Stu. Rip Cameraman Stu. Camera guy Stu. Uh, if someone puts powder on me, I'm like, fine. If I got to put it on myself, it always feels like I put on way too much. And then I'm annoyed. And then like taking it off after sucks. Like I don't want to put it on myself ever. I'd rather shine. I, I put it on myself for the first time really ever in the last few weeks after uh, there were some changes at the NFL. And there's no uh, no makeup ladies. Definitely. You know, it's funny. A couple of weeks ago on the podcast, I called out All Things Comedy for calling up Liz and asking her to give them notes about the studio and then not implementing any of them. Like as if like hanging up the phone and forgetting the entire conversation took place. And I was like, hey, that's not cool. Like it seems like you're just wasting her time. And to their credit, after I said that, nothing has happened. <laughs> no one has said anything to me as if no one here watches or listens to the episodes at all. Some people do, though. I know Rebecca does. Shout yep. out to Rebecca. She heard us complain about Athletic Greens. We're getting some Athletic Greens sent we to us. We didn't complain about Athletic Greens. I did. You did. Yeah, I yeah. did. You didn't and complain. It, you just said we're out. It I just said I'm out. So if you're listening, can you send us some more? And she uh, was listening and got it. Got them to send some more. So yeah. thank you. But Rebecca heard my note about Liz and the notes and just <laughs> tucked it away it was like i'm not getting involved and rebecca good for you you don't have to this is not your job no. someone above you should have done anything change the lights in here get me some new lighting it's bad we look green and we're not green mm. that green is woke if you want green go check out guardians of the galaxy 3 <laughs> and now it's time for did we get any notes <laughs> Did we get any notes? So I, I forgot to mention this. When I said All Things Comedy hadn't said anything to me about it, I, I was wrong. They did say, Anthony, we will make all the changes that you mm. said, all the ones you, Liz said, if you guys can stop dancing. Mm. They said, we're trying to go woke. We're trying to be less provocative. And if you could just stop dancing, that would be great. People would feel more comfortable. And I told them, <laughs> I told them to stick it where the sun don't shine. I said, Billy, I'm dancing or I'm not podcasting. And I said it like in a way that there was a rhythm to it. It sounded like it almost rhymed. And Bill was like, I got it. Bill goes, I got to respect it. I got, I, I don't have to like it, but I got to respect it, Anthony. And then we hugged for a long, long time. <laughs> so long it was almost woke. <laughs> but we broke it off. Um, no notes this week, but we did get another gift. Uh, we got a cool one from JC Alexander. He makes, uh, he, co he makes stickers. He combines people's names with their favorite sports teams, and he hooked us up. We got some Jesselnik Steelers action, and we got some Rosenthal Patriots action. My, my kids, I mean, I love this uh, too, but I might not be able to keep them because there's two of them. I've got two kids, and they're going to be all over this. This is going on. This is going on the school water bottles right away. I wonder is this blasphemous to replace the Steelers with? Mine looks cooler than yours. I mean, I'm not really into the flying Elvi, which is what the Patriots logo is. Yeah. Uh, but just my big name overshadowing the Patriots logo. That's how it should be. Mm hmm. Looks good. Yeah, you are more important. No, I love it. I'm gonna um, maybe I'll throw it in the water bottle. Maybe I'll keep it blue because I'm gonna throw this one out as soon as I'm finished with the water inside. <laughs> then maybe I'll save it. But uh, but thank you. I like it. I appreciate it. JC Alexander. Uh, Etsy. And that was. <laughs> Did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Notes. 
Guys, speaking of anti-woke, Vice President Kamala Harris tried to tell me the emails aren't a thing. <laughs> tried to tell me that that's not the way that the world is progressing. And we are anti-woke. Emails are a thing. It's time for Email Corner. Email Corner. Email. Email. Emails are a thing. 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 Emails. Emails. Email Corner. corner. Emails. Emails. It's Email Corner. Guys, emails are a thing. I, I don't care what the woke, the woke hive wants you to believe. They're a thing. They've been a thing for at least, Aaron, when, did he, when was email invented? Probably 1996. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was testing you. You're right. 1996. <laughs> it was a great day. June? June 13th? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great day. Uh, emails have been a thing ever since. Thank God, or else uh, Aaron wouldn't have a job. It's true. Aaron, you got hired over email. Is that correct? It's it's actually pretty accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other than this podcast, it's the only form of communication Aaron uh, participates in. It's emails. Mm -hmm. They're a thing. It's tricky for a marriage, but it's good. You know what phone calls are? Not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> All right. Let's start uh, with a question, really a comment from uh, a friend, Pale Pale. I don't know. It's pronounced it's uh, spelled P-A-L-E. Um, he says he must admit that he used to skip the ads on the Justin Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. Chair VP. Junior Vice President. Until one time I was forced to listen as the episode played while I was in the shower. Once I learned that Anthony sometimes says funny things, sometimes, during the ad reads, and I want all the hot jazz I can get. Uh, interesting to see in the shower there. Um, stop skipping any ads. It was at this point I realized that when Greg quotes a number of pre-rolls before the start of each episode, he's referring to the number of pre-show ad re reads. That was a revelation to me because for months of listening, I believe Greg was referring to the number of marijuana cigarettes he consumed before <laughs> each recording. I thought the right reason Greg trips over his dick so frequently during ad reads was because he stoned his shit throughout the duration of each and every JRVP podcast. To Greg's credit, I was actually very impressed how well he performs during 90% of each episode while high off his ass, but all the pre-rolls made a lot more sense uh, made a lot more sense of the misspeaking instances. There it is again. Uh, anyway, how yeah, and Vows uh, now to listen to all your ads. He's going to see you in uh, San Francisco. It wasn't really a question, but I just wanted to address it because both can be can be true. That's, yeah, both things can be true. Um, I let Greg pick the emails this week. Normally, I do it and tell <laughs> Greg what's up, but I gave him a bunch. Next week is a mailbag, so I was like, you just you just handle it all. And so Greg was like, I don't need a question. I don't care what the segment's about. That's the, I don't I'm not going to answer questions like some kind of woke pussy. I just Words thought it was funny. Comments. Aaron Aaron laughed at the whole thing. It's yeah. funny that he would email us to tell us that. <laughs> because listen, when you're a cool kid, I mean, if you're watching on the YouTube, I am wearing a leather jacket. But I uh, I am wearing a leather jacket, which is cool. So I know what's cool. You know, sure. After the podcast, will me, Aaron, and Greg go pick up some pre rolls? And, and smoke them and call them pre-rolls the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> you don't call them post-rolls. Right. Wait, I, I love marijuana cigarettes. Like, I love ads uh, before the show. That's a pre-roll ad. Uh, and I love marijuana cigarettes. Uh, both of those need, need to be true. And the ads are more challenging the more marijuana cigarettes I have. So I, it is, I haven't told you because I always want you to think I'm a professional, but... I, I do have exactly as many marijuana cigarettes as the amount of ads that we have in the show. So only one, one ad today. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty cool. Just what's, one marijuana cigarette. What's cooler, like inaccurately calling them pre rolls or accurately calling them marijuana cigarettes? <laughs> it, it's both are pretty pretty lame. I think it'd be funny if you if we were the kind of podcast where we we announced all the drugs we taken before the show. <laughs> we had four joints today, everybody. Four marijuana cigarettes. <laughs> I got I got a I got a water bottle full of beer. We're good. We we should do a high show one time. Okay. I don't know when we would do it. I feel like it would be bad and I would be annoyed that it was bad. People might enjoy watching it. Maybe one day. It would be fine. I've me I've mentioned to the, you uh this before that I think during the pandemic especially uh I definitely would get high like earlier in the day of a JRVP episode. And you're not like zooming uh, by showtime it is many many hours before but that, I, I did that a little bit yeah, it but it's, fine. It's, it's, fine. Not, it's, it's fine but it's not ideal 
Yeah, that's what I sort of landed on. Yeah. I, was, I wasn't funnier than you in those episodes. No. Uh, all right. David M. Aaron, asked, Aaron, do you smoke pot? <laughs> no. If you were going to, would you do it right before the show? <laughs> sure. Couldn't have hurt, you, have you ever heard what I do. Have you ever smoked it before? No. Not even when you were like a kid? No. Not even when you were like four years old? Especially not then. Okay. So if we, we had you smoke, you wouldn't get high. You know how you don't get high the first time? Sure. We'd have to make Aaron smoke a couple times. And then see what would happen to you. Right. Three or four marijuana cigarettes before the show. Pre-rolls. I don't, th- I don't think it would help. Yeah, I don't think it would help. All right, David asks, uh, who was your favorite guest on the Jessel Nick Offensive panel? And uh, who was the worst? You'll always be the bell of the ball to me, Anthony. Greg, I too would have chosen Debbie's body. Thanks, David. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, thank you, David. Listen, I, I, th- I debated whether or not to answer this. I, I bet if, if I was choosing questions this week, I would not have chosen this one. Uh, it's a little too much information, but now that Greg picked it and put me on the spot, I'm going to go ahead and answer. Uh, I, lo- I loved, I'd, let's say 99% of the guests were already my friends when we had them on. The, the thing that uh, my favorite guest, the one that like sticks out where I didn't really know this person and they like blew me away with how like great they were as a guest. Um, we've become friends since is Adam Pally. Do you know the actor Adam Pally? Yeah. He's, he's in, he's in a he's bunch funny. of stuff and I forget what he was on at the time, but I had him and Casey Wilson on and he was just so funny. Like everything he said was hilarious. I just had a huge smile on my face. Other guests like Joan Rivers, maybe one of was one of my favorite episodes. Um, T.J. Miller did a lot of different things on the show. Was fun. Nick Kroll, John Mulaney. Like I, I had a bunch of great guests. There Kristen was Kristen Shaw was good. Kristen Shaw was great. But the Kristen Shaw episode is the one I'm going to talk about for my least favorite guest. And let's say I didn't, I don't, didn't hate this guest, but it was someone that I did not know was on with Kristen Shaw, and I'm just going to say the name. Uh, he's huge now. He's a, he's a big star now. Uh, Billy Eichner. Okay. Uh, he was fine on the show. Like, I did not know him at all. He, at the time, Billy on the Street was, was, a, it was a big show on whatever network it was on at the time. And my producer on the Justin Lick Offensive was the producer on season one. So we're like trying to get not just comedians, but other people from comedy. And she's like, let's get Billy Eichner. And I was like, great. And then he's fine on the show. It's all cool. We don't know each other, so it's a little awkward, but it's like, it's fine. And at the end of the episode, I do a thing called Defend Your Tweet. And I do it to Kristen Shaw first. I like, I say her tweet and I'm like, Kristen, defend your tweet. And she gets up on the desk and crawls over to me on all fours and then slaps me in the face (laughs) like a light slap. And she says, you leave that tweet alone. And that's her defending her tweet. And the crowd loves it. I'm like, okay. I'm like, great. That was funny. But... In the moment, I'm like, you know what? I feel like I flinched. Knowing she was going to slap me, I kind of like, like either closed my eyes a little bit or like turned my head. And I was like, oh, that comedically, that was not what I should have done. I should have taken the slap full on, but I, I didn't. So then I'm like, Billy, defend your tweet. Billy makes a comedic choice, crawls up on the desk and comes over to me. And I know what's about to happen. I know Billy Eichner is going to slap me and do exactly what Kristen Schaal did. So I'm staring at him and I'm like, I'm just going to take this on the face. Billy Eichner, for some reason, hits me so fucking hard, <laughs> so fucking hard, where like the, like the bone, uh, there's like the bone below his thumb hits me on the jaw and I like see stars and I cannot believe, I thought it would be like, you know, just a kind of a loud, like fingers on the cheek slap. He clocks me and I like, I literally see red, like I want to murder someone but I have to just stop and look right in the camera and say like, that was Billy Eichner and Kristen Shaw. We'll be right back with more Jessel Nick Offensive. And I'm furious. And like we, we finished, Billy has no idea what just happened. Billy just sits back down and he's like, that was great. And then afterwards I'm like, I go to the producer and I'm like, I can't, did you see fucking, and she's like, yeah, he, he hit you hard. I'm like, I can't believe how fucking hard he just hit me. <laughs> and she's like, I'm going to talk to him. And she goes to Billy and she's like, you really hit him. Like that was, I don't know why you hit him so hard. Like that was crazy. And he, she's like, you should email, say something like e- apologize. And he emails me the next day and says, I'm sorry if you feel like I hit you too hard. <laughs> as if it was me, as if I was just being a bitch about it, uh, that I was like, okay, um, you're my least favorite guest. Mm, you're like, okay, I will pocket this story and I will use it in 11 years time. Mm-hmm. On the greatest podcast that's ever been recorded, the Jessel Nick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. 
junior vice president. Yeah, it was not. I was not happy with old with old Billy Eichner. See how good a story was that? I never heard that story. What a good job by me picking that question. How did that not come up with the whole Chris Rock Will Smith thing? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, you were you the know original. We, yeah. Yeah, I guess I just don't think about Billy Eichner as much as you do, Aaron. <laughs> it's a good show. Hey, you know what's woke? Billy on the Street. Bros. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Billy on the Street was anti-woke. Yeah. Bros was woke. I Get woke, go broke. Was there much uh, feedback when that aired that people were like, dang, he really hit you or did people no. not really notice? No, no one noticed at all. It's a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's that was a big funny. dude, like, right? Is he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 He's a big guy. But I feel like if you're just sitting there, you don't need to be that big. Uh, for Yeah. I, I could slap you and it hurt. I'm not that big. If you I think slapped so? hard enough. You, don't you know think, what? Let's, if I slapped my hardest, you don't think that would hurt you? Hit me. Just I, sitting there and there's no defense? It wouldn't affect me in any way whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and that was... Email corner. Emails. Unite. And now it's time for ad copy. So uh, I wish I could talk to dogs. That's like, it's my thing. I would want to talk to Rummy. And uh, one of the things I would ask him. Not to hurt you. No, yeah, stop barking at me. Just get to know me at this point. It's been a while. Uh, but no, how they're feeling, all that. Uh, but just like, are you enjoying the food that you're having? Are you really enjoying that dry kibble? Or would you like a little raw? Would you, you like it raw? Do you really think I give my dog kibble? No. I care about my dog. Okay. I love my dog. Kibble is woke. <laughs> you want to be anti-woke? You get yourself some Mave. Mave is a raw dog food, protein rich. It's just as easy as kibble. So I think people want to be lazy and just like kind of pour dog food and not have to do too much. And it's the same thing with Maeve. You get, you get it in the mail, you just pour it out of the bag and it's delicious protein rich dog food that helps the dog's gut health, immune function, oral hygiene, skin and coat health, all this d- different great stuff. And you can smell it like the I'm not saying the food itself. You can smell that, too. It smells good. But better breath from the dog. Uh, Their fur is better. Everything looks better. And dog parents see results in 28 days or less. And like I said, there's no mess. There's no prep. There's no thawing. You just get the dog, the uh, raw dog food. You open it. You pour. And you serve. It's that easy. I will say this. Since I switched Rummy to Maeve, I got a compliment on his coat. Like His coat looks really shiny. What do you feed your dog? He looks super healthy. And I said, Maeve, it's new shit. See, this is why uh, our emailer now listens to the ad read every week. You're not going to miss out on stuff like this. Uh, Maeve has a thousand five-star reviews. Uh, Dogs love it. Even picky eaters. Try it out. Make the switch to raw today. Right now, Maeve is offering $40 off your first order at meetmaeve.com slash jr. VP, go to meetmave.com slash JRVP. That's M E E T M A E V to receive $40 off your first order. That's M A E V dot com slash JRVP. Not tripping on my dick today, only one pre roll. Great to put that in the ad. And that was <laughs> ad copy. Don't talk to my dog. And now it's time for headlines. I like to feel that music. Let it, let it course through my veins. <laughs> you know that song is almost woke. Why? Feels woke. Just, just a little little woke tinge. Feels woke. Uh, you know it's not woke. Hot pockets. <laughs> Eating the last hot pocket. That's just rude. Uh, and uh, a Kentucky man. Uh, accused of shooting his roommate for eating the house's last hot pocket has been charged with felony assault. I ask you, did the did shooting the roommate roommate go far enough? Listen, I mean, sh- shooting your roommate over eating the last hot pocket is the Kentucky state flag. 
They, they live for that shit. This guy's going to be the mayor when he gets out of prison. How many roommates did he have? I think like, it's was just two. It's the two of them? I mean, it's a hilarious overreaction. It's, it's very funny. Hot Pockets aren't good. So it's crazy to get that upset. I get if you're like really hungry. Do you remember we had, we had a roommate, so sophomore year, and I would always come home and eat his food? Because I, I, I had no access to a grocery store at all. And he would drive and pick up a bunch of cheap shit, like little pizzas. And I would come home wasted at three in the morning and make a pizza. And a lot of times I would fall asleep and, he, and, and I would wake up to my roommate whose pizza I had taken, shaking me, mad at me because he had to get up and take it burning out of the oven after I fell asleep and the fire alarm would go off. And he was really mad um, that I, and he never shot me, but I never ate a hot pocket either. That eating, uh, that, that, that like, I wonder if he just came home. Shout out op- to Pete Gardner. Opened up the freezer. Shout out to Pete. If he just opened up the freezer, saw the hot pocket was gone, got his gun and shot his roommate, or was it more like a, I'm thinking about having a Hot Pocket. I think we have one left. And the guy was like, oh, no, I ate that. And then it was like, boom. I think he got home. It sounded like uh, he got mad, he ate the last Hot Pocket. He allegedly began throwing tiles at him. I don't know why they were tiles, just sitting around. Uh, And then it went from there. They started yelling at each other. He went and got the gun, and he shot him uh, in the butt. Shot him in the ass. There's a lot of details about this story uh, that are funny, uh, but shooting him in the butt is great. First, I got to imagine that they had tiles there for when they ran out of Hot Pockets. <laughs> it was like, hey, like, I'm hungry. Can I get a Hot Pocket? We're out. Let me just eat one of these tiles. That's just as good. Um, what are the other... Uh, and also, it's very funny to, sh- to be mad at someone and shoot them in the butt. To, b- the, to walk in on someone and be like, holding a gun on them and be like, turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the guy was running away, but I like to. I like to think. I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you, if I had a roommate and I ate the last hot pocket and he came in with a gun, I would have to think like, this isn't happening. Like, I'm not gonna die over a hot pocket. But we were we were roommates, and we had many roommates. You mentioned, you know, the peak, you know, Pete Gardner, Bernie is pizzas, but especially when it's just you're down to two. When we, me and you were roommates in L.A just that one year where it was just the two of us and like we live by a code and one of those it's there's just some things you don't do as roommates and one of the you know part of the code it's unspoken is you don't eat another man's last hot pocket if you do all bets are off you can get shot in the butt yeah our rule my rule when i lived with greg was don't shoot me in the butt (laughs) it wasn't because of like listen i had no money that if Greg came home with leftovers from a restaurant, I was immediately plotting on how to even make the mine. <laughs> I would, my, my move was I would wait until Greg, because Greg had to work in the morning. I did not. So I would wait until like three in the morning and then I would go and eat them. And then when Greg, like a day later, would be like, where are my leftovers? I'd be like, oh, I thought I threw them out. I figured they were bad. And you'd be like, why would they be bad? They haven't even been in there a day. And I'm like, I just assumed, you know, I like to go through the fridge and clean. But no, I ate those things. If you brought food into my home, I was going to eat it. And you weren't allowed to shoot me in the butt because that was my rule. <laughs> um, so there, there's uh, a lot of things about this story that are shocking, that are funny. But the funniest to me is the detail that totally changed the story for me. In that it was the man arrested for shooting his roommate in the butt was 64 years old. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shooting, shooting your roommate in the butt is a young man's game. And if you're 64 years old and you got a roommate? Well, Hot Pockets is a young man's game. I mean, who, who is fighting over Hot Pockets at 64? I don't know how old the guy who he shot was. I'm guessing it's another guy around his age. I don't know. Unless it's like a weird sitcom where it's like yeah. a young kid and this old guy but that really made me laugh that he's 64 years old listen speaking of sitcoms once this writer's strike is over Aaron when's the writer's strike gonna end oh I'm hearing I'm hearing bad stuff you're hearing bad stuff really yeah, yeah. what do you hear it'll be like January January yeah. dang Whew, that's woke I want to I want to pitch a sitcom it's about me and Aaron being roommates <laughs> <laughs> and th- it's like it's it, the the episode starts. Episode one starts. Aaron is at home recovering from getting shot in the butt, <laughs> and it's just. And I've got to take care of him. I've got to help him, and I just to help him eat. I just make him eat like the hottest hot pockets. 
They're like so hot. It's burning your face. Ugh. And there's nothing you can do. It's only one episode. I think <laughs> it's gonna it'll get canceled right away. But I think I think it's Aaron's time to shine. Aaron, would you take that job? Sure. Sure, yeah. Would just, you want creative control? Or would you just trust me? I'd just trust you on that one. Okay. Yeah. I um I feel like you're missing an opportunity here. Like, why not include the hot pocket shooting in the first episode? It feels like you don't have that much you know, dr dramatic uh, tension to chew on here. Like, let's not let's not start after that. Aaron, let's tell, include that. Aaron, tell them why I don't include it. It's too woke. It's too woke. <laughs> it's way too woke to in include that because then it's going to sound like it's anti-guns, and that's woke. Mm. We're pro-guns. Like, I think maybe if they, we get a second season, it would be a thing where I, uh, I discover that if you put a dictionary down the back of your pants... You're bulletproof. And then I just start eating Hot Pockets like crazy. <laughs> Shoot me in the butt. It's not going to do anything. I, um, that's, that, that's the tagline. I feel like it could be a lim limited series. At least give it more than one episode. Six episodes, something. I, l I mean, getting shot in the butt. Remember in The Sopranos when there was like a rapper who wanted street cred? So one of the mobsters was like, I'll shoot you at mm -hmm. this gas station and I shot him in the butt. And then he was like a joke. Like getting shot in the butt. I would rather get shot in the head. I'd rather get shot in the head than get shot in the butt. Well, you'd die if you yeah, get head, shot Yeah, head's head. gone. Or it could be a, what was the Harrison Ford movie where he gets shot in the head and then just becomes a different person? Regarding Henry. Regarding Henry. It could be like a regarding Henry situation. Yeah. You know, you get shot in the head and then you're like, or you get shot in the butt and your whole personality changes. You're like, I'm nice now. Yeah, you're woke. I'm woke. Oh, shit. That would be horrifying. Okay, that's a, that's a sitcom when the writer's strike ends in January. Is a guy who's, uh, who's woke, then gets shot in the head, and then becomes anti-woke. You know? And you could have different actors. You could have, like, Jimmy Kimmel play the woke one, mm. and Adam Carolla play the anti-woke one. That's good. It's like face-off with wokeness. That's the, kind of th that's the kind of entertainment I want to see. Regarding wokey. <laughs> Mm hmm That's a terrible title. Go ahead. Listen, let me just say that if, if you're an American and you want to watch something, you want it to be anti-woke, and that's fun. It's fun to see those things. <laughs> it's, it's fun to line up a bunch of them and watch them all in a row, and only those things. Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. Home of the Anti-Woke. Star Spangled Banner. America the Beautiful. I'm talking about amber waves of grain. <laughs> Get excited, sheeple. Our next story is from the Washington Post. I'm going to just quote it because um, uh, I can't really top how they describe it. Quote, a man who is living with the decomposing corpse of his mother in Germany, <laughs> has been charged with nine counts of attempted murder after spraying police at his apartment door with flammable liquid and setting them on fire. Love it. <laughs> Love it. And uh, listen, you could have not told me where this took place. And I, my first guess, my only guess is Germany. Germany is the kind of place where you want to hang out with your mom's remains. <laughs> your mom dies, it's an opportunity. And I think that, like, from day one, you are just staring at your front door, waiting for rescue workers to come and take that body away. And if you think they're getting away scot-free, you got another thing coming. Right. Rescue also, workers? You know what I call them? What? Woke work workers. <laughs> Wokers. It really just comes off the tongue so well. <laughs> you really... <laughs> rescue workers? Not in my house. Not in my mom's corpse. <laughs> How long had the mom been dead before they tried to get it? A while. Uh, I'll, find, I'll find it, but I think it, they believed months and months, like six months. It's like in a zoo when a gorilla's like, baby dies, and the, they won't, the, the mom won't give up the baby, and they have to like, tranquilize it and get in there and take the ba body away because it's like, unhealthy. It's like that with this guy and his mom. Yeah, she was 91 years old. No one had seen her in many months is, uh, is what they said, so they're not really sure how... Uh, long it was there. The crazy part to me is though the flammable uh, 
liquid, spraying the police at his door with the flammable liquid and setting them on fire. Do you want to hear how many different people were hurt and how many went to the hospital in this? Because it's, it's fucking Greg, amazing. You know I do. <laughs> Nine people went to the hospital and 35 were hurt. 35? I don't know. I don't know if this was a conscious situation that they're sending in like endless amounts of uh, rescue workers and uh, and he's just spraying them with the flammable liquid, but 35 people were somehow hurt in this. It sounds like the professional. Have you seen the professional, Aaron? Oh, yeah. Have you seen the professional, Greg? I think so, but yeah. Amazing movie. Yeah. All-time performance from, who's the bad guy in that movie? Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Uh, the greatest Gary Oldman performance ever. Everyone! Yeah. Gary Oldman's anti-woke. That much we've known. Yeah. For sure. Uh, they sound like they sent way too many people. Maybe, I would, did they come and like knock on the door and be like, can we talk to your mom? And he was like, no. And like, hey, we know what's going on in there. Let us come in there. Let us check it out. And then he was like, spray, spray, spray. Right. Fire, so, fire, fire. So yeah, like I said, three rescue workers are still in life-threatening condition. Five others serious for injuries. They went there thinking it wasn't some big deal and then found the door blocked by cases of bottled water, smashed the glass uh, to get in. And then at that point, um, he started firing the, the liquid uh, fled to the balcony, and then they called for backups and, and more services kept coming in, I guess. But I don't know how 35, that just seems insane, but 35 people were injured in it. And whatever he was spraying out there, like if it got on you, it was bad. Yeah, he must have set the building on fire. At one point, are you like, right. hey, right. let him keep his dead mom? <laughs> <laughs> like, like if it's like, if it's all your, if, it, if it's 34 of your friends sitting around on the, on the, on the sidewalk, nursing burns, and they're like, hey, Greg, get up there. Greg, get up there and see if you can talk some sense into him. I say let him keep it. Is he alive? Did they take him alive? Yeah, he's alive. Uh, he's uh, being held by police. They also found a 73-year-old man dead in another apartment in the building. It's not clear if the cases are connected. They're not. They, people die. If a guy is that Why? into his I mom, think they're connected. If a guy is that into his mom that he keeps her dead corpse around for months and then tries to kill the people with fire who are trying to get her out, he's not checking on the neighbors. He's busy with his mom's dead body. Well, maybe his spray uh, got, to, got to them and killed that guy or who knows. They also found uh, a number of, and this could be tough for you because he sounds like he's... Child porn? No. <laughs> <laughs> that you would embrace. Uh, it sounds like this guy was pretty anti-woke. They found uh, documents criticizing coronavirus vaccinations, uh, and it sounded like he was very anti-vax and was preparing for some sort of doomsday catastrophe. He's pretty anti-woke. You know, I don't care where this happened. He's American. <laughs> Spacious skies. Wait, spacious skies is really what they said. I thought you you uh, messed that up, but that's really it. What's a spacious sky? Just a big sky, big old sky, a lot of space. Just stop looking at me. <laughs> What's a spacious sky? Yeah, you sound like a fucking Canadian. It makes me sick. Real Americans know what spacious skies are. They're near the uh, Purple Mountain Majesties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's nothing worse than dropping your phone in water. You know? Hell, uh, it killed Logan Roy. It's pretty much how he, he went down. In the toilet. Um, but if you're powerful enough, you can try to do something about it. Like a government official in India who ordered an entire reservoir to be drained in an effort to retrieve his lost phone. Now, I, I mean, this is great for obvious reasons. It's an insane thing to do. Water is not scarce yet, but it's about to be. In our lifetime. It's pretty scarce. It's in our scarce lifetime, it's going to be scarce. ugly. This is like insanely wasteful. Uh, I don't know what the situation is in India. If it's a California situation where they're like, we need this rain. We got to keep our cows clean, whatever it is. But they've got to be mad at this. How did, it, how did this phone get in the reservoir in the first place? I mean, I assume he just dropped it. Why is he at the... Because like, he he's at the reservoir for like an opening of the reservoir. Like, what's he doing? And it just falls out of his pocket. He's like, oh, 
There goes my phone. Yeah. I love, like, what is on your phone that you've got to do this? So he said that it contains sensitive government data and needed retrieving. Um, that seems very uh, sketchy. He dropped the, the phone worth about $1,200 into the dam after local divers failed to find it. He got some divers. He then paid for a diesel pump to be brought in. Uh, he ended up pumping out roughly 2 million liters, 440,000 uh, gallons of water, <laughs> enough to irrigate uh, 600 acres of, of farmland uh, for days until a water resource department uh, official stopped him uh, following a complaint. So we, so we never found his phone? No, he got the phone, and it was, uh, you guessed it, ruined by the water. <laughs> I mean, that was the thing. That's so, the thing that seems so obvious. How does he not know that the phone's not going to work? Well, it's nice to have. He's pumping out the water like into what? Like into an into a another container or into just like the ground like goodbye by water. I don't know how that works. You saw, it was they have some ho- some uh some pipes, some uh what do you call it? It's the picture of water. Well, then they tell you is, that's where they're sucking the water out. The hose. The hose. 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 Good word. Hose. Bros before hose. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I think they were just sucking him into the hose. I don't know where it goes from there. What, what am I, a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, one, is, one is like a waste of time and one is a waste of water. Like if it was able to put it waste somewhere money, else. Yeah. If I were him, dr- you drop your phone in the reservoir, pee in it, and then be like, you got to get rid of this water. And then hey, here's your phone, mister. Right? I mean, I don't know if like one... You know, one P would ruin uh, an entire reservoir. Whenever we talk about reservoirs on the Justin Luke and Rosenthal Vanity Project, JRVP. Junior Vice President. Nine times out of ten, it's a guy peeing in the reservoir yes. and getting caught. The water this supply. is the one out of ten when we talk about a guy dropping his phone in India. I don't know. I think I want to know why he was there, how his phone ended up in the reservoir. I mean, I don't know. You're just taking a nice walk with your uh, with your friends at the... Kirkata Reservoir in Chhattisgarh, India. You know, these, these Indians... He said he was taking a selfie. I don't want to be stereotypical, okay? But we are anti-woke. Indian Politicians in India are always grab-assing. They're always playing grab-ass, fucking around. They're, it's kind of like jackass like throughout the whole government in India where they'll take your phone and chuck it into a reservoir as a prank. <laughs> it's just like a funny thing to do. Shave your head, you know? go to high five you and like hit you with a giant hand that's india 101 so i think like this probably happens a lot and this guy just got caught what was his office what was he what was his like rank they just call it, i don't know the article just says government official government yeah. official i don't know he should be fired he's been but suspended it's tough is he uh is he gonna be you know listener of the week not the listener of the week. let's see <laughs> Nope, next one. <laughs> All right, let's go. That. Last headline. You know, real quick, but let's just compare water bottles. Put it up to the camera. I didn't I just saw yours. Yeah. Look at yours. Well, Is that the lid that came with it or you put another lid on it? No, that's that's the lid that came with it, I think. Why are you trying to block mine? I mean, this is great um podcasting. You got to you got to watch the YouTube. Subscribe. <laughs> if you're listening, I'm holding up a totally reasonable 20 ounce uh, hydro flask. Shout out to hydro flask. It's good. Are you gonna, when you go home, are you going to give that back to your daughter? <laughs> and is it fits it, in the cup holder. Oh, it doesn't even have like a, like a nozzle. It's just, a, just a, an open sore that you drink out of. <laughs> Mine's got a little straw. Is that the right cap? Or is it like a, or you do like a, a cap from a blue bottle and put it on the green one? I think this is the right cap, but you might be onto something. I have been colorblind my whole life. So. That's true. Uh, there are a lot of ways to kill people. One of the most creative is to pose as an eight-year-old Ukrainian girl when you're actually 22 and then get adopted and then try to murder your parents with knives. Okay. <laughs> For, let's get this out of the way right now. Aaron, get your finger on the button because this little girl or this 22-year-old girl is the JRVP listener of the week. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the JRVP, the JRVP, the JRVP listener of the week. She's listener of the week because 
She pulled an orphan. Have you seen the movie Orphan? I have not. It's awesome. Okay. Then if you haven't seen the movie, then you must not be Peter Skarsgård. Or no. What's his name? Who's in the movie? Aaron, look up Orphan. Tell me, who, tell me the guy who's in it. Okay. Tell me all the actors. Orphan is about a girl who gets adopted, and she always wears a necklace. And then at the end of the movie, a movie which I have not seen, they find out that she's actually like in her 20s, was a prostitute, who was like a little person prostitute, who the, she always wears a necklace because she always she had, had like, a, like a rope around her neck. And she would try to escape, and so she had like scars on her neck from trying to escape the rope. But she was a sex worker, a little person sex worker, pretended to be a kid, and then I think does kill some people. It is Peter Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard. I said Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard. Sarsgaard, yeah. Vera Far Farmiga. Vera Farmiga. Mm -hmm. Esther Furman. Es Isabel Furman is the Esther. Yeah. Esther, and they made a sequel called mm -hmm. Esther, which no one has seen. Yeah. But I did not see the movie Orphan. But I love when people pull an orphan in real life. <laughs> It's as it anti woke often? as you can get. I love it. I don't know how often it happens. I don't think it happens too often. And this story is actually 13 years old. I think this is what they based Orphan on. No, it came out. Uh, this I don't. She might have copied Orphan. She might have got the idea. She might have been looking to kill some people. Uh, Orphan came out in 2009 originally. This story came. This uh, murder or attempted murder happened in 2010. The reason it's in the news now is actually they're making a TV show. Uh, about it. What's it uh, called? Is it uh, called Orphan? Uh, it is not called. Because that's a lawsuit. The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. There's some disagreement that some people think uh, she, she was 22. Some people think that she wasn't 22. She was a, a little person. It appeared and displayed uh, an adult um, maturity when around other kids, uh, but obviously was the size of a kid. Look, you know what's great? 22 year old Ukrainian girls, but you know what's even better? What's dare I say irresistible? Aaron, do I have to say it? Yep, eight year old Ukrainian girls. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And if right in between, if you get like if the concentric circle of eight year old Ukrainian girl and 22 year old Ukrainian girl, there's a little sliver, and that's the sweet spot. And this girl hits them both. Did she tr did she kill them or did she try to kill them? She tried to kill them. The Tr parents said uh, she threatened them with knives and then she also poisoned them once. You adopt an eight year old from Ukraine, you got to expect some pushback. You got to expect a couple attempts on your life. But this is just like it was poisoning, or was it? Aaron, how did she try to do it, Norfin? I didn't see it. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they said thre threatened with knives and then. Poison, which I feel like that's part of the whole adoption thing with Ukrainian eight-year-olds. It's like you want to live, you want to get a little more exciting uh, in your life, a little more excitement, live on the edge. Uh, that's what you do. Because Ukrainian kids, they want to cook, but they don't know how to cook. So they try to cook you things and it ends up just being poison. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's why Russia invaded. Aaron, is that right? <laughs> Of, and their wokeness. Because of the food and the wokeness? Yes. Uh, Aaron, take a guess as to how Orphan tried to kill people in Orphan. Um, strangle them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I bet that's it. Uh, you can check it out uh, on the ID network. So, so no one died. Curious case of Natalia Grace. I assume not because they said uh, they she tried to kill us. So... And where is she now? Tried would uh, you got to watch the show is for she that? Get, is she getting another chance? Is she getting another chance because you don't want to send her back there? She's twenty three now. She's past her prime. No, she well, she's she's twenty. They they think she's twenty two back then, so she would be about thirty five now. But maybe could still pass for eight. This is why you got to be 15. careful when you adopt an eight year old from anywhere. You got to say, okay, I want this eight year old, and they're like, okay, you sure this is yours? Last question. Hate to do this. Got to see you naked. <laughs> what? Got to got to make sure she's eight. Got to see her naked. Wouldn't you naturally? Wouldn't that happen as parents? Uh, you would at hope. Some point? You would hope so. You know, you're that's going, the dream. You're helping to to, to watch <laughs> that's, them or that's whatever. That's why you adopt. But I'm saying before they get on the plane, <laughs> let me see it all. Okay. Turn around, so I know you're not 22. That you're really eight. Part of being an adult. 
is making eight-year-olds prove themselves to you. <laughs> However you have to do that. I thought part of being an adult is being able to tell the difference between a 22-year-old and an eight-year-old. I have no idea. <laughs> I have literally no idea how you tell the difference. It's, it's impossible. You throw in a foreign language, it's, I mean, it's a fucking toss-up. It's like trying to choose between, between uh, oranges and tangerines in the dark. Right, Aaron? That's 100% correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. It's like trying to pick, pick between peaches and plums in the dark. I mean, that's... At night. That seems doable. It's like, it's like having two different soccer balls from two different brands. Like, Aaron, name two different brands of soccer balls. Uh, Umbro? <laughs> Wilson? Franklin? I don't and, know. And Adidas. It's like trying to choose between two of those. Yeah. Aaron, in the dark. In the dark, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. Case closed. <laughs> 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 and now it's time for choo -choo <laughs> recommendation station. I like it was so quiet. You could hear the leather in Anthony's jacket crinkle. You want me to start? No, I'm just taking my sweet fucking time. Well, yeah. we're doing you the start joint. We're 99.9 percent of the time. Well, I know we're recommending the same in the book. dark. Oh, that's right. We are recommending. So the same if book this if week. we're both holding uh, the Real Americans by Brandon Taylor. We yes. each have a copy in the dark. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell any difference. There's no difference between our recommendation this week. Maybe we did it for uh, different reasons, but I, I really uh, I really enjoyed this book. Love this book. Uh, it was given to us by our friend at a publishing company, which I have forgotten. Riverhead uh, Books, but it's Penguin. Penguin yeah, I had, I had the letter. Uh, I had it before, but I read the book. I mean, I waited till Greg read it. It just came out this past Tuesday. We got advanced copies. We loved his first novel. Greg read the short stories. I did not. But I like this one even more. I thought The Late Americans was even better. It, it kind of uh, had a little more scope to it. It follows different characters in a um, living in a college town. I believe it's the Iowa Writers uh, Program. Um, so they're all like in grad. They're all grad students trying to figure out their lives. And my favorite part, like in the beginning, it starts in a poetry workshop. Mm -hmm. Like a, um, they're working on their their PhD in poetry, or maybe their masters. And it's just like the the um, the politics of a writing workshop, which really took me back to Tulane, uh, Professor Cooley's class, which I loved. And I just enjoyed. I enjoyed all the characters. I could have read. Like I could have just kept reading that book. It didn't. It ended when it ended, but it could have just kept going and just mm. following more people. That I was. I was very into it. Uh, love love Brandon Taylor's work. We'll we'll uh, we'll keep reading him for the rest of my life god willing unless unless he goes woke <laughs> i mean there is a lot of bad gay sex in this and by bad i just mean like they're not enjoying it necessarily mm -hmm. all the time or that in, in one case maybe a little traumatic but also just like because they're bored and it's just something to do uh so that's part of it. I, that would traditionally qualify as woke, but I do love uh, Brandon on Twitter is a, a fun presence. He tweets a lot, so you got to be ready mm -hmm. for the Brandon Miller uh, Taylor attack, rather. Um, but he's a great critic. He 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 loves books. He hasn't. He's already in the middle of the next one. Like you can tell just by the way he talks about other books, um, how much he loves reading everything about it. actually he made a comment about the recent emma klein book which you recently recommended and he really loved that too and someone responded like oh that book creeped me out and he was just like i don't even think about it that way but like that book just made me feel something and if a book can do that then i'm into it and that's what i would say about the real americans too like it it definitely it's hit the, me sorry it's the late americans the late americans i keep calling it the, the real, real americans. americans that's a terrible title the real americans late americans make sense it's like we're a little late in the process here real americans <laughs> is anti-woke late americans <laughs> is woke thank you for uh correcting it. to me like it started really strong and i love the first character in the last couple of chapters uh were great and that's you know some in the middle like it almost reminded me a little bit of a Brett Easton Ellis book of there's just like all these different college characters mm -hmm. and they're bouncing around and like maybe it's not as strong as the sum of its parts but some of the parts are like amazing there's 15 or 20 like 
beautiful paragraphs that just like have some like mind blowing uh, sort of comment that I really sure love. and like the guy who like starts an OnlyFans to make money like I lo- just the way they described it all and got into it it was very current. like there's no very current and there's no like morality there's no one's learning a lesson here I, it's a, listen it's a great book I think we're over explaining it if you like our recommendations you're into it this is a great like let's call it a like a post grad novel. Mm -hmm. Uh, And his first book, uh, which I loved, was very much a college novel. Loved the book. Loved his writing. We'll keep reading him. The Late Americans by Brandon Taylor. Check it out. And that was... Recommendation Station Walker. Get us out of here. Whoa, Nelly, for Todd, too. That's a spicy meatball.